If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I post a new Tom Brady video every day. Let's go. We got a Super Bowl champion. Here we go. A seven-time Super Bowl champion joining us, Tom Brady. Tommy, how are you today? What's up, Jim? How you doing? It's nice to uh, nice to be here on a Monday after the Super Bowl and what a great game it was. I haven't watched one of those in a long time, but terrific game. I got a lot of friends on the Rams and they beat us and uh, I know how challenging they are to to beat and uh, since he had a chance, but in the end, man, the Rams just made some really clutch plays in the end. It was a, a really good game, really good Super Bowl. When you're watching the game, are you disappointed you're not in it or are you just taking it in like a fan? Um, you know, it's a good question. I think it's a Super Bowl Sunday is pretty interesting, you know, and I think I've been out of the country for a little bit, uh, you know, so I haven't kind of felt that ramp up, you know, that everyone's looking forward to on the weekend. But, you know, it's it's it just thinking when I was a kid and, and obviously throughout my career, it, there's such build up to the game and it's exciting. And it's you think about the game and you think about the commercials and you think about the, the food and the gathering and, you know, the, it's like the world kind of stops certainly in the U S for, for about four hours from the start of the game all the way through the end. And it's just, it's a, it's a neat day. It's, you know, it's, you're there with your friends, you're watching sports it really sometimes doesn't really matter who you're cheering for. You know, you're just watching football and it's a little bit of a national holiday, which is pretty cool. So I, I enjoyed watching it yesterday. I mean, I haven't, you know, I haven't enjoyed watching Super Bowls for a long time, you know, and obviously playing in Super Bowls, it's a different type of experience, which I, like I said yesterday, I'd much rather play in the Super Bowl than watch the Super Bowl. But I haven't even really enjoyed watching Super Bowls. Yesterday was the first Super Bowl I got to watch and just kind of enjoy watching these guys play and fight for something they've worked hard to achieve. You set your calendar and you sent out a tweet and you, and you said, uh, shit, uh, I guess you didn't make the date. <laughs> As you move forward I now, I know, man. As you move forward now, what do you set your calendar to? How big of an adjustment is it going to be? I know it's going to be a little different, and uh, that's okay. It should be different. I think there's new experiences and new opportunities for growth, and and uh, it was. I mean, it was for for a long time. That that was the goal, and it's, you know, if you're these athletes, and you could see it even with the tears of joy, you know, Odell and Aaron Donald and. You know, Von Miller got to experience it again. And some of these guys, Eric Weddle, I and mean, what a story Eric Weddle, um, you know, had. And then you look at Cincy on the other side, and it's the the agony of defeat. And, you know, they got to go back to the drawing board. They're, they feel like 31 other teams. So, you know, one team feels good. The other 31 feel pretty crappy. There's one fan base that's really excited. There's 31 others that are happy to have the season over with. And then, you know, the cycle starts again in the fall. So it's... It's a uh, it's a great feeling to win that game. It's a great feeling to be in that game, and I think even from watching it from the outside, it's a very inspirational thing for a lot of athletes to see because it's the one game that you play your whole life for. You know, you when you're in high school or when I was a kid, I dreamed about being in the Super Bowl. When the Niners won the Super Bowl, I would go out and bang pots and pans up and down the El Camino Real in San Mateo, and just I was so <laughs> excited, you know, and. Now then I played in that game and because I played in it, you kind of lose the sense of the perspective of the game, you know, just maybe so disappointed not being in that game for, for so many years, the last bunch of years that I played, you know, this game, I just kind of, yeah, I was bummed that I wasn't playing, but at the same time, I was happy for the guys that were playing that got to go, you know, live their dreams out in front of the whole world. And uh, it's a pretty amazing experience for everyone and their families and, only one team can win. Andrew Whitworth, I mean, what a great story he is. My great friend, you know, Neil Elitrosh has been the team doctor for the Rams for a long time and uh, just happy for him. So Sean McVay, and he's done a, an amazing job since he's been there. And he was on the other side of winning against us. You know, he lost against us, I don't know, three years ago in the same game. So it's a hard game to get to. It's a hard game to win. And, uh, you know, made a lot of dreams come true yesterday. For Matthew Stafford who was really a, a great player in Detroit. And statistically, he racked up a bunch of numbers, but he had a terrible team around him, quite frankly, and could never get it done. And he persevered. I know you ran into him this summer by accident and, and spoke for a few minutes, and, and then you played the Rams twice. 
Uh, he fulfills this dream now, comes to Los Angeles. The Rams went all in through everything at this season, and they got the payoff. Can you kind of explain what this feeling is like for somebody who is like Matthew, who's been laboring for a long time because you've had teammates come to you with the Patriots uh, and the Bucks to get that first championship? Yeah, and it was, uh, you know, Matt's another one too. You know, Matt and Cooper Cup. I mean, look at those two. You know, Sony Michelle is a friend of mine. I mean, these are guys that we all look around the league and we admire them for their skill, for, you know, how they play, how tough Matt is, how he always answers the bell. And then you look at Cooper Cup, how incredible of a player he he is, you know, and, and understanding where he started in the NFL and, and look at the kind of year he has, you know, has overcome his ACL from a few years ago and put together one of the greatest seasons the receivers ever had. So, you know, you have a lot of appreciation for those guys because they're, there's so many talented players in the NFL and, you know, it's, it's a competitive league. Those players are spread throughout a bunch of different teams. So you may be a really great quarterback, but you may not have the team to, to allow to you to get to that place where you want to get to. You may be a really great receiver, but never play with a good enough team, you know, and, and you're just trying to find the right mix of guys and the right team with the right attitude with the right desire and determination to get over the hump. And I think Matt found that in the Rams and they found that in Matt. Matt was a very talented quarterback and he went to a very competitive organization where, you know, you, you have Aaron Donald there and you had Jalen Ramsey. And I know those guys are great competitors. You had Sean McVay, who's a great young coach. And then they bring in, in the same year, they bring in Odell, you know, they go in all in with Odell and, you know, he has a great, you know, first, you know, quarter and a half of that game. And, and they go and they trade for Von Miller. And it was just, they, I, I really believe in that. You got to go for it. You know, you, there's, it, it takes a really bold, you know, no one's going to hand deliver you these trophies. I think so many people in the NFL think that their time will come. And the reality is you got to make it, you got to make it happen. You got to go out there and you got to do whatever it takes to, to get the job done and to put yourself in the position to win Super Bowls. Cause these things are really hard to, to earn. You can't buy them. you got to go earn them. And, you know, when you watch the Rams approach and, you know, they could go the other way, but it's not from lack of effort. You know, that's an organization that's determined to go out there and win Super Bowls. And, um, you know, I have a lot of respect for that. Tom, you were just talking about Cooper Cup and his remarkable story. He's the MVP uh, of Super Bowl 56. Should he have been the MVP of the season? Because if you take Cooper Cup off that team, um, gosh, he, he, he's the only one making plays, really. Uh, Odell is hurt. Uh, Akers comes back toward the end of the year. But consistently throughout the year, big play after big play against you. Knocked you guys out of the playoffs. Against the 49ers. Yeah. Then the big touchdown to win the game. Aaron Rodgers got the award. You probably should have gotten the award. But if you had a vote, would you have voted for Cup? I mean, it's, again, a, that's a tough award. I mean, I know it's so hard to, you know, give it to one guy. There's a lot of great players. And Cooper is just as deserving as Aaron. Um, you know, Aaron had a spectacular year. How can you say that he he wasn't, you know, as great as any player in the league this year? He certainly was and, and very deserving, always um, terrific player. Uh, Cooper Cup, though, has had an incredible year, too. You know, so it's just... I don't know. I'm never one for choosing one one guy, one player. I mean, Aaron Donald. I mean, if you're looking at a defensive player, who's more valuable to a team than that guy? I mean, he's just a force of nature. And it really has been. I mean, you can say that every year. He's one of the all-time great players to ever play in the NFL. So it's one person. You're trying to choose one person. And, you know, the reality is there's probably about five guys that qualify. There's probably another 15 guys that are incredibly deserving. Um but, you know, they got to give it to one person. And, and Cooper, I think when you see what he's done over the course of the year, he's as valuable to the team as anyone. And his game yesterday proved it again. And he's just determined player when he came out into the league. He wasn't the biggest, fastest, the strongest. But he's, he's built a career on a lot of the intangibles too. But, yeah, he can run and he can catch. And he makes really clutch plays. And – um, you know, Matthew did a great job. I was thinking in the game, you know, when you lose Odell, Rams were really struggling running the ball, and they're kind of a passing team. You know, they lose Robert Woods, I don't know how many weeks ago that was, six, seven weeks ago, and then you lose Odell, and now it's kind of you're in the 
second half of the Super Bowl, and you got to figure out a way to get it done. And they're losing. And uh, it took a hell of a drive. And what Matt did was he went to his best player, and he went to Cooper. And Cooper came through. Matt came through. And they ultimately – if I, I was thinking when I was watching, if they get the lead, this is – it's going to be really hard for the Bengals because of that pass rush. And they found a way to get the ball down the field, score the touchdown, and, uh, you know, put it in the hands of their defense. And the deep, you know, the defensive line did a great job with, uh, with the O-line of the Bengals and really forced Joe into some tough throws, tough decisions, and ultimately stopped them there on fourth down. But it's a, uh, you know, fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. It should come down to that. should come down to the last drive, and it did. It was for – you know, the ultimate prize, and it ended up being a really great game. So happy for both teams. It was a, a, a valiant effort by the Bengals. They had a great season. Um, you know, they're going to have to go back and figure out how to improve to win that game. And it's certainly not easy. I mean, you look at the Chiefs. They've been in, you know, they've been in the AFC Championship four, four straight seasons and won one Super Bowl. So, like I said, it's a hard game to get to. It's a hard game to win. You know, there's a lot of talented teams in the NFL. But, you know, only one team's ultimately is going to walk away with the trophy. Tom, uh, you were talking about getting the lead, and you've had this experience, and no game ever comes down to exactly one play, uh, but it will be pointed to. Tyler Boyd uh, picked an awful bad time uh, to have his first drop of the season. It came with about six minutes and 20 seconds left. Uh, Bengals were driving the ball. Uh, they had a four-point lead, dropped the ball for a certain first down, uh, on which could have become, you know, another scoring opportunity for Cincinnati and perhaps put the game out of reach. Not to go back into the archive too far or to bring up a sore spot, but Wes Welker had this type of moment uh, with you in the Super Bowl uh, that would have clinched the game. Uh, how do you think this will go for Tyler Boyd and, and for the Bengals when they look back on that and uh, just have to live with that? I think that it's always kind of – you know, looking at one or two plays in the game and, you know, if this would have happened, if that would have happened. Yeah, and, and that that's the reality. Tyler Boyd has had a great year. I mean, really, in that receiving core with Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, and they've really come on, especially the second half of the year, and played great. So, you know, they got nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, it's a game of skill, and, you know, throwing and catching is a hard skill. And, uh, you know, it could go right all year, and then you have one play where, you know, you just don't come up with it. It was a tough catch. You know, he knew there was going to be contact. You know, you, you, you don't, I would say, not lose your concentration. You just, you know, you're thinking about, you know, protecting yourself and getting the ball to the first down, and you just, you know, you, you end up dropping it. But that's – it's part of the game. And, uh, you know, Joe made a good throw. It, I, they still could have come up short is the reality. But, you know, the other team needed to make a lot of plays too, and uh, the Rams did that. So – Sometimes when one team doesn't make it, the other team can capitalize, which they did. You know, sometimes the team never get, gets a chance to capitalize because of how, you know, good a performance could be. And that's just the way football goes. And it's a, it's a tough sport. It's a tough game. And, uh, you know, the team that makes the plays wins the game. And that's what happened yesterday with the Rams. Jim Gray with Tom Brady. We're here on Let's Go on Sirius XM. The coach is always going to get some scrutiny after a Super Bowl. Uh, Zach Taylor had some rough spots yesterday. Uh, the end of the first half, the clock management going for it uh, on the first drive uh, after the Bengals had a good defensive uh, holding of the Rams when they uh, got the ball on the kickoff, and then he went for it uh, on the 50-yard line, fourth and one. Um, that led immediately to uh, a Rams touchdown. And then running the ball on third and one, uh, at the end of the game, uh, with a guy, you know, you got Joe Mixon back there, and you, you don't, you don't give him the ball. Um, all of these things uh, are going to go under the microscope, and these are things that the Bengals and their fans are going to have to live with. I, I kind of place this on the coach, Tom. Uh, <laughs> he let he let those guys down. Well, I think you know. Again, there's a lot of these things that come down to playing and coaching, and and they're really synonymous with you know winning and losing, and it. it I think a coach can make a decision and a player, you know, doesn't execute the way he's capable and it falls on the, you know, a possible decision of a coach and vice versa. You know, sometimes a coach makes a decision and, you know, a player is trying to do the right thing. It doesn't go well. It's a team sport. So, 
it's always easy to second guess things and go on, especially when there's so many variables to winning games. So, um, you know, Zach had a great, you know, had a great season as a coach. And at the same time, you know, I'm sure there's things he wishes he could have done better. And I'm sure there's things Joe Burrow wish he could have done better. And I'm sure there's things the Rams players wish they were done better. I'm sure Jalen Ramsey didn't feel like he played the best game of his career, even though, you know, his team won. So that's why it's a team sport. It's not golf. It's not tennis. It takes a lot that goes into winning and losing. It's, it, it is such a team sport. And you know, the great part of being about teammate, a, a teammate is, you know, when one of your teammates doesn't do a great job and you come through, you know, and vice versa, you don't do a great job and they come through, you know, you, there's a sense of a team sport that that's, that's why you play it, you know, cause you can make up for a guy not doing his best and they can make up for you not doing your best. And, you know, it's, it's not like an individual sport where you, if you don't have a great performance, you end up losing the game. So that's why I like team sports. I love throwing to Randy Moss and Wes Welker and Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and Rob Gronkowski and Julian Edelman. Cause they can always come down with it for me. So I was the beneficiary of so many great players and coaches over the years. What do you make of all these analytics that go in now to the NFL and, and we see so often and we haven't talked about it uh, this year uh, on Let's Go. Um, I don't know how big you were into analytics or your coaching staff with Bruce Arians, but we see this a lot around the National Football League. Obviously, that played out on that uh, fourth down call uh, early in the first quarter that led to the Rams' first touchdown when the Bengals weren't able to convert on fourth and one. What do you make of all the analytics that, and these slight percentages that, uh, and the data that indicates this is what you should do in this circumstance, but it doesn't take into account necessarily that you're doing it against Von Miller and Aaron Donald and so forth? Yeah, I, again, I think there's, those things are important. And I think we use them more now than we ever have. I think in business and sports, um, you know, you're trying to analyze the data to put yourself in the best possible situation. But, you know, 60, 40 or 40, 60, you know, in the world of sports, I don't think matters that much in the end. Um, I mean, I think for winning and losing, yes. But, you know, I think those things have to be evaluated, um, you know, in the, in the moment. That's why you have humans making those decisions. And they don't always make it right because, I don't know, you could make a perfect decision and, you know, quarterback throws the ball and a guy drops it. And that's just the reality. And, how do analytics account for that? So it's a lot of human error that goes into it. There's a lot of human margin of error that goes into it. You know, I don't always know what the right decision is. You got to just be in the moment and you got to try to make the best decisions as possible, knowing that even though you make the best possible decision, it's not always going to go right. But that's the same in every other aspect of life. Your things don't always go the way that you expect them to go, even though you think you're making the right decision at the right time. So, um, you know, it's, it's what we deal with all the time. And, uh, you know, you got to try to overcome it when it doesn't go your way. You got to try to take advantage of the opportunity when it does go your way. And, uh, you know, that's why you come out with winner, winning and losing. Jim Gray and Tom Brady right here on Let's Go. Our program is brought to you by USAA Insurance. We're dedicated to helping the military community protect what they've worked hard for with insurance that meets their high standards. Get the coverage you deserve. USAA Insurance. USAA. Tom, we want to salute USAA for their salute to service at the Super Bowl. Terrific program by Wayne Peacock and everybody at USAA. And the salute to our military was just outstanding this weekend here in Los Angeles. They do it 365 days a year. And I know that this is something that is near to you as well, the people who protect and defend all of us. Yeah, always. And I think even you know, if you think about that game, you know, I, I remember at different times in the course of my career, you know, we'd be in those meetings at the Super Bowl when we arrive at the site and that you have a security presentation and the law enforcement would come in and say, look, you guys are in the most protected area of the world right now. There's people that are protecting you and all the members of our military and our forces um, are doing such an amazing job for us. And we're so blessed to have their support and their their duty and their their call to our country. So I'm so grateful for everything they do to to serve us, to serve our country. And, you know, we all should do the best we can to give back to them. Every team now turns its attention, Tom, including the Los Angeles Rams. They're turning their attention to their parade, but soon they'll get ready into a very busy off season with so many players and cap issues, uh, free agents that they have. 
And everybody starts this mad scramble now. And, and as you've said a couple of times uh, in this broadcast, Al Davis said it best. It's a vicious struggle to be number one. One team wins and the other 31 are looking for answers. Well, the Rams yeah. are going to even start looking for answers here pretty soon because uh, of all these free agents. So how do these teams develop these new coaches and develop these players so that they can become cohesive and try and compete? You know, it's a, good, it's a great question. I think it's more challenging now than ever. You know, if I'm looking at the landscape of the league and even, you know, for my experience in 22 years of, of kind of, you know, paying really close attention to everything that's going on in the NFL, it's, it's a hard task. And I think the business of football is really excelling. And I think the, um, you know, if you just even watch yesterday's show, you know, the game, but it's really the entertainment between the pregame show. They had, you know, entertainers before the show. They had the halftime show, which everyone always makes a big deal. They had the postgame shows. It's just, it's all encompassing. And I, I think the business of football is incredible. And at the same time, for me, I think of the product of football and it's harder to develop coaches now. There's, they're, they're not sticking around in places to learn and educate themselves like they used to because there's so much money in it. You know, the college game has changed drastically. You know, the level of player that's coming into the NFL, even though he may be more skilled um, physically, he might be a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger and faster. But I don't think mentally he's at the same place of development that, you know, we as players were 20 years ago because – we went to colleges that worked on developing the players that was, you know, when I chose Michigan, I chose Michigan because there was a lot of other pro quarterbacks that had come from that program. And when I went to Michigan, they developed me as a pro quarterback in a pro style offense. It's even hard to look around college football now and find those type of places. It's hard to find coaches that stick around in a college to develop a program that in the end would develop in, and, and allow those players to, transition into the pro game where there were pro coaches that were kind of staples of programs for periods of time. There's so much change and turnover in college programs, in college coaching because of the money involved in pro coaching that I don't think the development of the coaches is the same. So everyone's searching for the same thing. They're searching for good coaches. They're searching for good players. And I just think it's harder to find now than it's ever been. How do you go about developing these folks? I think they're, there could potentially be investments, you know, made into, um, you know, whether it's coaching academies. I know there's different, you know, for play for the player standpoint, you know, for example, if you wanted to be a pro player, there was a very traditional path. You basically went to college football, you spent four or five years in college and you, that prepared you basically to become a pro, you know, there's gotta be some form of college development for players, there could be outside of the college system, which they're beginning to see more leagues um, and ideas for leagues pop up, spring leagues and so forth that can develop players, but also the same for coaches. And I think investments need to be made for, for coaching prospects as well. And there could be areas where people could invest their time and energy to learn about being a good coach and about being players um, as opposed to just letting the college system develop the future pro talent at both the coaching and playing level like it used to for so long. Because I don't think that system is going to work as well as it used to going forward. It's tough to change this system, though. Uh, it's tough to get the players, the owners, the colleges. It's, it's really complicated. And the need to develop players, particularly the young ones, and, and really coaches as well, Look at all the coaching turnover. It's just, it's, it's, it's remarkable. And, and the money is, is so big now, Tom, uh, as you're aware. Uh, how do you go about changing a system that's entrenched? Well, I think people may just be forced to change because if, if you even look at the college system, it's really forced to change now at this point. Um, it's going to have its different challenges, and we don't even know what those challenges are going to be, but you know, with NIL and transfer portals, teams are going to look different from year to year. Coaches are going to look different leading these programs year to year. They're just going to go where, you know, the money is for them. And, you know, college pro coaches are going to want more guarantees as pro coaches. Um, 
But if they get fired in the end, they're just going to have their friend hire them at the next place. So hopefully there are people that will look out for the greater interests of the sport in the game. And I think there are people who love football. They care about football. They want the product of football to be as great as the business of football. And, um, you know, obviously there'll be things that people are made aware of and hopefully they can put their time and energy into the requisite changes in order to help the game, the product and the business continue to grow at the same pace. Tom Gronk's in the news quite a bit. Uh, you guys have been linked so much. Do you think he's going to continue to play? I don't know. You know, I think it's a, I, I, I certainly hope so. I mean, I've watched him basically practice and play since he started in the NFL. He's, he could certainly do it. You know, it's a big commitment for all of us. You know, it's a big commitment to keep playing. And I know when he's willing to make that commitment, he's unstoppable out there as a player. So he'll have a lot of opportunity in every aspect of life because of who he is and, you know, his personality and what he brings to what he does. So I sure hope so. And there's a lot of players that are going to be facing those tough decisions and, and really weighing the risks, the rewards to continue to play. But Gronk's someone that, you know, I love – He's an inspirational person for me and uh, an inspirational friend, teammate. And, you know, I think football is a lot better when he's in it. Tom, there's going to be a lot of interest in what you do next. Uh, you stay close to the fans by doing this program. This is our last show. We won't be talking to you on a weekly basis until next August. People can follow you on your social media handles. Uh, but how are you going to go about your life? And, and if somebody sees you out working out because you're staying in shape, that's going to lead to all kinds of rumors. So <laughs> uh, what will you be doing next with yourself? And will you stay in, in, in shape or are you going to start uh, running over to uh, eat a few uh, key lime pies? <laughs> you know, I love those key lime pies too. That's, uh, that's my dessert of <laughs> choice. So there'll definitely be a few more of those. And I'm super content and happy with, with uh, how I feel and my decision. And um, yeah, as I said, all you can do is take it day by day. Nothing's promised for us. I'm going to do things that I really enjoy and spend time with people that I really enjoy spending time with. So uh, the future is bright. I look forward to the opportunities that, I, that are ahead. And I look forward to speaking with everyone again next year. So I've had a great time doing the show. We'll keep it going. And, uh, you know, thank you to everyone for their amazing support. Thanks for another great NFL football season. And uh, I hope it just keeps getting better and better from here. You said last week your golf game was terrible. Somebody wrote in, uh, you know, one of the haters uh, uh, said that, uh, uh, actually a very funny line, uh, that you've been retired for a week, but you've already thrown your putter for more yards than all 22 years you were in the NFL. <laughs> He's been, that sums it up. I felt like I retired from football. I should retire from golf with how shitty my golf game is. So that needs a lot of fixing. I don't, I don't think all the time in the world can help fix that, though. But there'll definitely be more time for that, which I'm looking forward to. Perhaps you'll need to find an expert, and any athlete will tell you that it helps to work with an expert. For buying or refinancing a home, your expert is an independent mortgage broker. Find one at findamortgagebroker.com. It's powered by United Wholesale Mortgage, LLC, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS, number 3038, licensed in all 50 states, and the District of Columbia. Tom, we've had some great, great guests join us uh, on Let's Go this year. I want to thank Sadhguru, Oprah Winfrey, Andrea Bocelli, Jim Harbaugh, uh, all the great members of the media who joined us uh, on that roundtable. That was just terrific. Vin Scully. That was amazing. I know that was a big thrill and a treat for you. Uh, Snoop Dogg, uh, Joe Burrow. And we're going to have a lot more great guests next year as well. It's always fun to be able to talk to all those folks, Tom. And I know it was a big thrill. Vin Scully was a guy who kind of touched you just because of your childhood. Yeah, for sure. And I think all those people contributed in a big way to what we're doing. And so grateful to them. And uh, it was, it's fun for me. You know, I'm a, I'm a fan of sports and I'm a fan of people that inspire me and that are doing great work in the world. So from Sadhguru who touches one aspect of the world, one of the amazing people that I follow to Vince Scully, to all the amazing lessons of Oprah Winfrey, the list goes on. So it's fun for me to do it. It's fun for me to share a little bit of part of my life with you guys. And I'd also like to thank all the amazing people at Sirius XM who I've known for Got over 20 years, Scott Greenstein, who's just a great friend of mine, Steve Cohen, who's been at Sirius for, for, for two decades now. And, uh, you know, they keep doing amazing work. And, um, you know, it's just a great media platform. You know, I've been a fan for a long time and it continues to grow, continues to give out great content to all the listeners. And I love to be a part of their family.
Tom, thanks for your time. It's been quite a ride. Uh, thanks for taking us along. Uh, it's been it's been really an honor and really truly a great great pleasure. So I thank you personally, and thanks to Snake Hagen, uh, who has been there with us every step of the way. Uh, Snake, you did a great job. We give you a hard time, but guess what? And and Ring Ring Alarm may have an offer for you. Thanks, Snake. Don't let him do you like that, Snake. We appreciate you, man. See you soon, and keep up the great work with all your marathons. You've inspired me, you know, our messages to each other. And Snake's an amazing athlete who's uh, transitioned his life and he's living a great, healthy lifestyle, which I'm super proud of. So congrats to you, Snake, and all the people out there that continue to just live their dreams. And that's what it's all about. We're here one time. Let's make the most of it. And let's live with joy, hope, positivity, and courage. Who's going to badger you now? I mean, who's going who's gonna to just pester you? I'm not, I'm not doing it. Who's going to badger me? I thought you were bad yeah, I snake because he's the one that's always taking the shots. Nobody. <laughs> so I'm sure uh, I'll, I'll have to just regroup for the next six months before I get back on the show. Take some of your little s- scratchy shots. I'm cool with that. That's the great Tom Brady. What a treat to be able to do this each and every week throughout the football season. That's it for this video. I post a new Tom Brady video every day. So please like and subscribe. That way you'll always have a new Tom Brady video to watch every single day. 